Penetrating the surface of the sea, the morning sun illuminates the coral reef. Some fish have already left the crevices where they've been sleeping and have begun searching for food. Others are still hiding in the shadows. Every corner of this reef contains unusual and diverse species. In a clump of hydroids, a harlequin ghost pipefish seems more curious than afraid of the passing strangers, as also do the shrimps in the neighbouring fire coral. A nudie branch couple, caring of nothing else than feeding and mating. A careful observer can glimpse creatures previously unseen even in the most exposed places, like this nameless crab living inside Acropora coral. The wall drops dramatically to about 35 metres, where a narrow slope leads to the second wall, the bottom of which measures about 120 metres deep. Visibility approaches 30 metres, revealing a scattering of diverse sponges. To us, it looks like the terrain from some distant planet. One huge sponge stands out from among the others. It is a Salvador Dali sponge, a unique and recent discovery. Gorontalo's marine environment is incredibly diverse. This area of Sulawesi contains over 500 species of hard coral alone. Within the distance of a few hundred meters are found shallow coral gardens, coral walls, pinnacles, caverns, rubble and mud. A giant coral pinnacle comes into sight like a guard emerging from the mist. And then several more. Each pinnacle attracts different marine life. Past the giant columns, Gobies watch over their neighbourhood, while shrimps keep busy excavating their common shelters. A seahorse, lacking a place to hide, imitates debris to avoid attention. A flounder lies still in the sand until a stranger comes too close for comfort.
Far below 40 meters and clearly visible is the bottom edge of the wall, ending in a sloping mud bottom. In the sheltered overhangs, protected from currents, hang colonies of strange white tunicates. Some colonies measure almost a meter in length. Tunicates are marine animals that have an in-current and an ex-current siphon for pulling in food and releasing waste. They can live singly as individuals or together as colonies. Called foxtail tunicates, these were discovered under gloomy overhangs in Gorontalo, such as the dramatic cavern that locals call Jin Caves. Near the surface, there is a rubble area where currents and waves carry sand, making an ideal environment for a mix of marine life that lives well together. A sea cucumber seems to pull itself along with its multiple mouth parts while searching for food. Even a single starfish has hitchhikers. Another type of shrimp has completely different plans for the starfish. The funny and attractive harlequin shrimp will flip a starfish upside down and carry it to their lair where it is kept alive while the two shrimp devour it. In the waters above this thin strip of shallow reef is another unexpected find. Local children playing and diving just steps from the front of their homes. Flourishing in small valleys between the cliffs of Gorontalo's southern coastline are many villages facing the deep blue waters of Tomini Bay. Without the cumbersome infrastructure of cities, these places preserve the integrity and community of the traditional fishing village. Locals live as a big family, taking part in each other's daily life. One such village is Olele, which lies at the edge of Tanjung Kerbao, a huge uninhabited promontory with sheer cliffs. After school, children gather on the shore and spend their time playing in the water, paddling their small canoes and learning skills helpful to their future profession as fishers. People here seem satisfied with the circumstances of their simple lives and with what they have. As in many places in Gorontalo, the shallow reef crest at Olele measures only a few metres wide before the coral wall begins. When Olele villages fish along the coral, they use live bait trailing on a line from a drifting canoe. No anchors are thrown onto the coral. Here in eastern Gorontalo, depths drop hundreds of metres immediately offshore, allowing traditional fishermen easy access to pelagic fish only found far out to sea in other places in the world. Here, the main catch is yellowfin tuna, whose fresh meat is prepared for export to Japan and Korea, earning a premium price. Since the main income of villages like Alele comes from tuna exports, their reefs are not overfished and still teem with life. Tuna arriving from the open ocean immediately goes to the village processing plant to be filleted and packed hermetically, ready for export.
Yang bagus nama ambil. Kalau kalau sini yang bagus. Asap ya. The local men trained in the proper techniques need little more than a clean, sharp knife to prepare tuna meat in accordance with international health and quality standards. For the first time I went diving in Gorontalo, I just went off the beach. There's one narrow place in the rocks that, that front the beach where you can get out from the sand go down. The wall, the, the continental wall of Sulawesi, the wall, is about five meters from the beach. So you get off the beach, five meters, and there's a wall. So I went out and had a nice dive. I discovered uh, what we call the cathedral. It's a cave, but it has a skylight in the top, so it lets the sunlight come in. It's very nice. There was a turtle inside. I found an octopus, the wall is wonderful. So as soon as I come back, I get out um, on the beach and I turn around and my staff points back to the ocean and says, those are whales. And I saw down the beach, this line of fins coming along. Well, I know that that's only five meters from the beach and you can't have whales that close to land. So I tell them, no, those are dolphins. Um, but as they started swimming closer, I noticed the dorsal fin is too far back. There is no nose and they are far too big to be dolphins. I was like this, I just couldn't believe I was seeing five whales. And I had my camera right there with me on the beach and I just stared and they were very slow, just very slowly going along the edge of the wall and I didn't do anything until they were gone. I thought, oh, here's my camera. <laughs> so no pictures, but a strong memory. <laughs> so I figure if you can have five whales the first time diving, maybe there's something worth looking into. In eastern Gorontalo, dramatic cliffs plunge directly into deep water. In fact, the continental wall of Sulawesi, so far out to sea in other locations, comes within a few metres of the beach. Here, Tamini Bay reaches over four kilometres in depth. Every year, large cetaceans pass within a few metres of the shore. A couple of scientific expeditions have done some survey work about eight hours away in the Togian Islands which are located in the southern part of the bay. Gorontalo's underwater environment, however, remains largely unexplored. Several of the diving locations in Gorontalo were discovered accidentally. This includes the multiple pinnacles of Sentinel's dive site. Widely spaced and at various depths, each pinnacle here seems to attract different marine life. Living in commensal association with many anemones and some corals, the Sarasvati shrimp is a cleaner shrimp and approaches prospective clients with a typical dance. The pink dots seen through the transparent body are eggs. Not to be confused with other commensal shrimps, it was officially named Periclimini Saraswati after the Hindu goddess of the arts in 2002. In the hollow of a sponge, another crustacean takes shelter. Usually observed in association with sea stars, sea urchins and cucumbers, the bumblebee shrimp is rarely found because of its tiny size. This one tries its best to make friends with a neighbouring goby. Although its overtures are rejected, 
the shrimp keeps trying to establish good relations, to no avail. Eventually, it must find comfort in a solo dance. One example of the area's endemic species is the brilliantly tri-coloured orange-back fairy wrasse. Shunning dense coral environments, it prefers rubble, where mixed schools continually circle within a few cubic metres of water. Because of this, it is easily missed by casual divers, despite its brilliant colours. Females and immature males of various fairy wrasse species all appear a dull red with a hint of orange blush on their backs and swim together in mixed schools. One of these other species is the Solor fairy ras, another of Indonesia's endemic species. In other areas of the country, the male will only occasionally display his amazing nuptial phase, which he will exhibit briefly during courtship with females. However, in Tamini Bay, where the Solor ras mixes with the local endemic orangeback ras, the dominant male will continually display this colour pattern. This makes Gorontalo the only place where this rare nuptial display can be seen persistently. Shrimp gobies are lucky indeed. They never have to maintain or clean their homes. Instead, they play their own part in a commensal relationship with snapping shrimp. Scientists believe that both parties derive mutual benefit from their relationship. In this instance, the shrimp goby, unable to dig its own hole, lives in a burrow that the shrimp constructs. The fish will use the burrow upon retiring for the evening or any time danger is present. The shrimp, on the other hand, is nearly blind making it an easy target for predators during the times when it must exit its burrow to remove sand or rocks from inside. The goby helps the shrimp by guarding the burrow and warning the shrimp of approaching danger with a flick of its tail fin. Evidently, this relationship begins shortly after a juvenile goby settles down in the substrate from its planktonic life. Usually, a pair of shrimp gobies will share a hole with a pair of snapping shrimp. Each night, after all the occupants are inside, the shrimp will collapse the entrance of their home. This serves to protect them all from marine creatures that are able to slither into an open hole hunting for prey. Every morning, the shrimp goby will burst through the collapsed entrance and its snapping shrimp partner will begin the arduous task of rebuilding the entrance for that day. The octopus is essentially a water-filled balloon without a skeleton. It moves around and keeps its shape with the help of muscles acting on internal hydrostatic pressure. Crawling on all eight legs, it uses its suckers to push and pull itself along. It is also a master of disguise, having the ability to change colour rapidly in order to blend into its environment. It also has muscles underneath its skin, allowing a change of skin texture from spiny to smooth. An octopus can also change its size when it needs to squeeze in and out of small holes or to enter hard-to-reach places. One type of octopus lives in discarded shells that it carries around. It is commonly called the coconut shell octopus. This one has decided to move into the much larger and posher home of a distant relative a nautilus shell, even if it is hard to handle. Perhaps disturbed by a fish searching for food and alert to the presence of divers, 
It observes its situation with irritation. It decides to finish lunch before moving again, unwilling to forego a single delicious bite. Walking has long been thought to require the combination of muscle pushing against bone, but this walking octopus proves that bones are not necessary. The dive ends with one more amazing encounter. Pink eye gobies. Although hard to find in other areas of Sulawesi, they are found in several dive sites here in Gorontalo. Since these gobies never move from the coral where they live, they can easily be relocated in future dives. The gentle afternoon rain brings a rainbow to Gorontalo's shores as divers head home from a satisfying day exploring under the water. Water hyacinths float down river in a seemingly endless procession. People living on the riverbank can easily enjoy this parade of flowers passing behind their homes. Rain in Gorontalo is a good sign that the sea tomorrow will be calm and ideal for diving. In August 2005, German and Indonesian marine researchers with Wallasey Expedition Indonesia II did some survey work in Tamini Bay, including parts of distant western Gorontalo. A local policeman, who had helped Rancia organize a series of coral preservation campaigns among Gorontalo fishing villages several years before, recommended that they fit in time to survey the reef in Alele Bay. Having only time for one dive on their final day, the team recorded an astounding 136 coral species and 160 fish species in that single dive. Based on the number and variety of butterfly fish species alone, the health of Alele's coral reef ranked above those found in other parts of Sulawesi. Leaving the surface at Alele Marine Preserve, the group descends below. Having a request for a specimen for scientific research, Rantia searches the coral wall carefully. Ichthyologists have described two new species of marine blenny from Indonesia, and have made some new discoveries on the distributions of these species. The blue belly blemmy was only described scientifically in 2004, after it was first discovered in Tamini Bay, Sulawesi. Only during the past two dive seasons has Rantia noticed this cute little fish. It is easily recognised by its dark blue belly and double white lines on its eyes. Rantia's search is successful. In no time, he's found some bubble coral. First discovered and photographed in the early 1980s by Neville Coleman, but not described officially until 2003, Coleman's coral shrimp is considered a localized species with limited distribution. 
although discovered initially in Papua, in Gorontalo, it is extremely common. Ironically, the more widely known Vir filipinensis found in waters from Japan to Australia is rarely encountered in Gorontalo. It has purple lines on its transparent body instead of the purple joints of the Coleman's type. Within the last two years, staff have found a third morphology in the Vir complex in several locations in Gorontalo. Referred to casually as the hybrid coral shrimp, it is the most beautiful among the three, having purple lines down its legs and purple rings encircling its transparent joints. Since it is currently being researched, it is gently invited into a container. Knowing other shrimps are nearby, Rantia stops to rocky outcrop, where a magnificent sea anemone provides shelter for Sarasvati shrimp. Crinoids, or feather stars, are very common, even at depths of 6,000 meters. This one has a Stimson's crinoid snapping shrimp. The Stimson's shrimp live in male and female pairs among the arms of only a few species of crinoids. On another rock is another crinoid, this time hosting a squat lobster. Further observation of the crinoids brings something quite unexpected. Group of Mysostomid worms. These flat, soft bodied creatures come from a remarkable group of small parasitic worms that live commensally with crinoids. Since so little is known about these worms, no one knows what their colour variation might mean. These found in Gorontalo remain unidentified, and the video shot there represents first time documentation of their behaviour. Wanting to encourage local preservation of these pristine reefs, Rantia initiated a coral preservation campaign that first began in 2002. Joining forces with the local university's Nature Lovers Club, police and provincial fisheries department, dive shop personnel brought a basic message. No coral, no fish. Your choice. Educational materials were borrowed from staff at Bunakens Marine Park in North Sulawesi. Rantia also designed a simple poster that dive staff coloured by hand to illustrate the adverse effects of blast fishing. Olele villages actively protect their own reefs. 
the local government has designated Eunice as one of the official guards of the marine environment. He seeks to influence the next generation as to the importance of preserving coral reefs. Under the trees of the rocky shore, children watch a dramatic illustration of the impact of blast fishing. Eunice builds up a three-tiered house of cards representing the coral reef. Fish cut from coloured paper are placed around the levels, indicating where they live. Then out comes a small glass bottle with an exaggerated long yellow fuse representing a bomb made from nitrogen fertiliser. When it is thrown at the house of cards, everything falls down, clearly showing how bombing destroys the reef and kills all the fish. Jadi gampang lah itu mahal lah. Nah, di mata mau bom, tambah rencana bom buat dia ya, jatah. Lepas kejadian buat si jemali wadi itu benar ni. Tiga bilau malu buat si pun lah si. Sehingga di mata kejadian apa tu bilau malu pun lah lima itu pekuat si. Karang-karang lima ilate, kau mana tak pulak rata si. Tiga mati mayoyo mesti. Masalah sanang tu tak pulak rata rata. Kau jatah lepas tiga mati malah jadi kejadian ni. Mayu dulu pun ulah. Sehingga itu mengai lo, mengai lo mayu dulu pun ulah. Bolu mau naik bolu 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 tuai tuai mau naik mayu lagi. Matalah ilo re beda bangun daripada penula. Ini gambar li, bangun ada matalah daripada penula. Sehingga mai dulu penula, mai dulu penula. Ati malagi, boh pernah boh nama boh tuai ulah kiki ada. Ati pilih liu alihu kejadian beti jamal tolando. Ati mau andulu liu lo patihu, mau alih mengandulu tu tumuru lo tamo halawa. Wow rakyati, bila mau alih sampai mau alih teya. Itu maksud lo gambar yang berarti ya. Mengarapi. In November 2007, Olele Village inaugurated its own marine conservation area. It is roped off by buoys and protects about 300 metres along the shoreline of this. Appropriately enough, included in the new boundary is the reef that so impressed the German and Indonesian researchers of the second Wallasey expedition two years before. Fishing is no longer allowed, and boats cannot cross. Divers pay a designated fee to the village to dive there. The residents of Ulele feel very proud that people from far away want to come to visit their reef. Music